Hello my dear YouTubers, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video where I'll be doing a yoke cam. I'll be recording my yoke whilst flying. Now a subscriber on a previous video of mine left a comment saying that it'll be good to see the a yoke cam, me using my yoke whilst I'm doing a flight. I did a little test yesterday flying around London. London seems to be my uh, test base as it were. And the footage turned out quite well. So I want to show you this. Keep in mind it's pretty raw footage. It's just a test I was doing. But it actually turned out better than I expected. So I want to show you this. This video is going to be for those who are curious. Maybe you don't have a yoke and you want to see what it's like to use a yoke in Flight Simulator 2020, what it looks like, perhaps what it feels like. Perhaps for my current subscribers, you want to see how uh, my yoke behaves whilst I'm doing a flight, what it looks like. So I'll be showing this, showing you this footage. Also keep in mind, I'm using the 737 replica handle set. I'll link my original video of that in the top right for you. So your throttle unit is likely to look different to mine. Even though I'm flying a Cessna, I just like using this handle set. So just keep that in mind. And another thing is I'm using the sensitivities that I use in this video. I'll show you in the top right there. So if you're curious about how the sensitivities work with my yoke, then watch this footage. Let's not make this intro longer than it has to be. Let's get on with the flight. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Let's go full throttle. Seeing if this will work, you can hopefully see this part of the uh, throttle system and my, some of my yoke. The important part, the trim, and me pulling back and pushing forward. Taking off from London City, you can't really see the keyboard area. But I'll be telling you what I'm pressing if I do press anything on the keyboard. <coughs> Take off from London City. Big pause there. Probably need to reinstall. I'm going to start trimming up. Hopefully you can see that. Use my thumb on this rocker switch here on the Logitech Flight Yacht Unit to trim upwards. So basically it will make my plane go in an upward direction. Now I'm trimming, pushing, I'm actually pushing up on the rocker switch. It's quite confusing. I will go in this into this in more detail in a future video. I'm pushing up on trim to actually trim my aircraft down. Just so I'm going to... And now I'm going to reduce my throttle. Basically, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a first white notch on the Logitech throttle unit. I put it there, and that tends to... A, it doesn't let the aircraft overspeed. And B, it tends to put me more or less in level flight which is good. Beautiful day in London. Hopefully this is recording on my mobile phone as well and it's not going to cut off. Beautiful day. Beautiful sights. Wonderful scenery. I know there was a lot of bad blood about this scenery when it was first released. It's a shame because now it just it's fascinating to fly around absolutely wonderful to fly around so I'm just pushing up on my trim switch to nose downwards I know that's counterintuitive you think you push down to trim uh, down but in an aircraft you're pushing forward to go down and pulling backwards or pulling forwards so pulling towards me to pull up so to put your trim switches in that configuration as well, it just, it works well with the mind when you're flying aircraft is the best way to say it. I think that's a lot of trouble that people have when they're flying aircraft when they begin, especially with a joystick. If you push forward on a joystick, it actually makes you dive rather than, so if you've got a joystick this way and you push forward, you're pushing up essentially, that will make you dive. It's counterintuitive. 
but once you get used to it, I mean that's the way aircrafts work, you push forward to dive, push towards you, pull towards you to, to climb. So what I'm getting at there, I'm just adjusting my trim, what I'm getting at there, if you adjust your trim, or think, make your trim to act in the same way, push forward to trim down, push, pull backwards or towards you to trim up, just works well. Anyway, we do a quick loop here, so I'll start turning and come back in... I'll turn to our left and come back in and loop towards London City Aircraft. I'm just adjusting my trim slowly so I stay roughly at this height, which it is now more or less doing, which is all good. Wonderful views of London. Absolutely fascinating scenery pack. Wasn't good apparently when it was first released. I waited well after release before getting the scenery pack. Not because I didn't want it. I just thought London looked okay, but then I started to miss some of the buildings. So I got it months after, a few months after it was released. And a lot of the kinks, a lot of the problems with it were ironed out. And I simply won't fly around London without it now. So anyway, I'm starting my loop, coming back towards London City. You can see on this part of the map here, this sort of uh, G1000, I want to get the aircraft going this way to go back towards London City. I can see visually, if I start seeing the shard in my front view mirror, let's get the mouse away from that, uh, I know I'm going in the right direction basically. As I'm increasing my rate of turn, the aircraft will want to nose down a little bit, so I'm just adjusting trim. There you go. So I know now, I can see the Shard, I can see the Thames, that London City is ahead of me. I can see the Canary Wharf roughly there, so I know London City Airport is just beyond that. Maybe I want to get a little bit higher. In fact, I don't want to stay at that height because... So I want to increase my altitude because I want to give myself around a thousand feet when I'm on my descent path into London City Airport. No complaints about this scenery pack now. Like I say, for the price it's a steal. I'll link the video I did of scenery packs comparing them to the defaults. This is chalk and cheese now compared to London defaults and it's a must at the price. Six pound, maybe seven dollars. Not quite sure of the conversion rate on this pack, but very cheap regardless. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that's London City Airport there. I can see the runway already, so I can start effectively getting myself lined up to some extent I do have a couple of buildings in my way there so I don't really want to crash into them I'm gonna go stage one flaps so I'm pulling my flap lever down towards me here now you may have them set a different way let me just trim down before the aircraft starts to climb too high and just control that trim so it doesn't dive too much. I prefer them in this way, it's like this sort of airliner way where it's zero at the top and you pull it down towards you to extend them slowly. This is the speed brake lever, I don't know if you can see that. We're not, we don't use that in the Cessna of course. Still trimming, I'm only using one trim setting on this because I've got the aircraft if it started to veer to left or right, I'll use this rocker switch to adjust the aileron trim. I don't need to because it's, it's actually quite balanced at the moment. I'm talking a bit too much here, not concentrating enough. Slow my speed down, go full flaps now. You'll see the flaps extending. It's a slow down considerably now, so I'm going to pull my throttle down even further. As you can see, it's less than halfway now. It's because I want to get my speed, you can see that on the left on this display screen, I want to get that to at least 70 now. 
and I can bleed off more over the runway. I am diving quite rapidly there. Come off the centre line of the runway, so I'll adjust that. Come to my left, and when the runway starts to swing to the right, I shall... bring it back towards the centre line. Now you can see my speed starting to get down even more. It's not quite where I want it, but it's getting there now, which is good. Like I say, I'll float over the runway. But I'll do, I'm quite nicely lined up there. Bring my speed down more, trim up, because I'm going way too fast there. And just float. No, my throttle. And just use the yolk now to control my landing. Float, float, float. Gently down. And there we go, and then you would taxi. But there you go, that's a demonstration. Hopefully that's recorded. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, it was pretty raw footage. It was only meant to be a little test of setting up the camera to record my yoke. But I want your feedback, please. What did you think about that yoke cam footage? Is it useful to you? Is it helpful to you? Give me your feedback. Let me know your thoughts. I would like to do another yoke cam at some point, perhaps in my Around the World Flight series. I'll link that in the top right for you. Perhaps on one or two of those flights, I can do another yoke cam uh, video or two. Let me know your thoughts. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon.